Joy, take it away. Hello, and welcome to Geo Up, Over and Down Under. I'm Joy. And I'm Rose. <laughs> and tonight is, it's our pleasure to uh, introduce Dr. Gwen Scott. Um, Dr. Scott studied natural medicine throughout her life with healers in Native American, African American, Spanish, Asian, Eastern Indian communities. She was degreed with a naturopathic doctor from Clayton College uh, of Natural Health in Birmingham. She was a television news anchor for over 30 years. She co-anchored the Inter International Hour on CNN and received a gold medal from the International Film and Television Festival for her work. Dr. Scott's a master herbalist. She also studied with a prominent alternative uh, med uh, medicine practitioner, Deepak Chopra. He's well known for his books, lectures and television programs. I'm sure that... Um, Many of you here understand his work. Dr. Scott's also studied with traditional healers, uh, Spanish and Native American communities. Um, she was a... Uh, anyway, we are here with Dr. Scott. Are you there, um, Dr. Scott? Yes, Rose, I'm here. We're so Hello, very Dr. Scott, and welcome. Hi, Joy. Thrilled to thank have you. Hi, you. Thank, you. thank you both for having me. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're thrilled to have you. We, we're, we're both big fans of your work. We also have with us today Catherine, who we, we know affectionately as CC. Are you there, CC? I'm here. Hi, Wonderful everybody. Hat. Hey, hey. Well, folks, I guess we'll get straight into it. Dr. Scott, how did your passion for natural medicine begin? Uh, actually, it started in self-interest. In my 20s, um, well, I really shouldn't say that. It started as a young girl. My grandfather was dean of science at Johns Hopkins and really plugged me into the importance of the natural world and herbs and that kind of thing. But it didn't really catch hold uh, in me until I was in my 20s. And I was very sick and had lots of drugging and surgeries, and I wasn't getting any better. And they basically said, pack it in. You won't make it to 30. And uh, that just didn't seem right to me. And a friend of mine knew and was doing medicine and learning medicine from Chief Two Trees, who was at that point the chief medicine man of the Cherokee peoples. And she took me to see him, and in a matter of months I was good to go and uh, astounded, and it lit a fire in me. So although I spent much of my life as a broadcaster, and that's how I made my living, and I also think in those days we did some good some of the time before, you know, the lid was shut on that, on that. Uh, I spent the other part, as you would with a passion in my downtime, just picking up everything I could uh, from anybody who would share with me. And I read every book I could get my hands on, that kind of thing. So I sort of led a double life that way. Hello? I was going to say, is everybody there? Yeah, I don't know what? what happened to Rose and Joy. This is Nighthawk, the uh, producer and owner of the station. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they went, they I'm went sorry. Back. I was talking. I had my mic muted. I was going to not forget that this time, and I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, um. okay, let's go on. Um, Dr. Scott, what we want to talk, to talk about today is Morgellons and uh, what your experience is with that, how you discovered it. Um, and then maybe we'll go into some self-diagnostic methods <laughs> about okay. that afterwards. Um, I guess if I have any message at all, please hear me. Um, I've been working with the elements that are being called Morgellons for 12 years. I started my work with Clifford Carnicom. I think most people know him. And um, we were a little kind of wandering in the wilderness with a few other folks. Uh, now, of course, there's a huge awakening and awareness. But with that said, um, the thing I really want people to hear, and I didn't have scientific validation until recently, that what I believe to be true uh, is in fact true. And that is Morgellons is not a disease. That is the great red herring that they've asked us all to swallow, that there's this disease out there and there's a, a segment of the population uh, involved, but that most everybody else is good to go. And that's certainly not true. And when I wrote my paper for Arizona Skywatch in 2009, 
I try to get that point across by calling it a syndrome. And the reason I say that it's not a disease, that's not to mean that people aren't suffering, and that's not to mean that these things aren't happening. Of course they are. But the reason I say it's not a disease, because we think of a disease as a pathogen that gets into us, measles, mumps, whatever, a single pathogen that is classified as a disease with a certain amount of symptomology to it, and that's that. And that's not what we're seeing here at all. We're seeing multiple materials in the human body that work symbiotically together, synergistically, that are being delivered to us through the air supply. Um, and when the body recognizes, and it's strong enough, mind, body, and spirit, to say this doesn't belong, it begins to try to push it out. Now, that follows Herring's Law of Cure. And Herring's Law of Cure says, and that's the basis of all natural medicine, all, whether it's homeopathic or whatever, all natural medicine stands on Herring, the foundation of Herring's Law of Cure, which says when we're healing ourselves, it's top to bottom, and here's critical, into, out, and in the reverse order in which it entered us. Now, we know these materials are still being delivered on a daily basis, so the third rule there can get a little murky because we're still we're just getting this material constantly with, through the chemtrail. So what we're seeing when we have a quote-unquote Morgellons person and we're calling it a disease is quite the opposite, and I, and I just don't know how to get people's head to this place, is this is a body that has the wisdom to say these things don't belong, these fibers, these pseudo-life forms, which is a really better, much more accurate description than fiber. These heavy metals, these crystalline polymers, this fungus, all of these things that work together, they don't belong in our bodies. And the bodies have the wisdom and the strength, and may I say the spirit, to shove it out. Very painful, very unsightful, unsightly, very difficult process. And so my goal, once I sort of clicked on to, that's what was happening, of course, with the help of many. Brilliant. I'm just a dot connector, really. Um, but I work with, I call the above ground underground, a lot of very brilliant minds in the scientific, in the, in the research community, uh, microbiologists, hematologists, <laughs> you know, all these wonderful people um, who share with me what they know and understand, physicists and all, all kinds of folks. So when I began to see that there was a match between what was coming out of these sores and what was being delivered through the air, and then I have a research doctor who has access to an atomic microscope who was able to observe live blood, you know, on a very, 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 very small scale and could see that this fungus was actually collecting these toxic metals, which we know, aluminum, barium, and the whole nine yards that are being delivered to us as well, uh, and using them as weapons against our immune system, big bells went off for me. And I began to realize that this was a very, I hate to give it over, brilliant system that was being laid into our bodies uh, piecemeal. And I'm not sure where it all started. I don't believe it just started with the chemtrails. I believe you can follow it all the way back to some inoculations post-World War II and a lot of other things, food. Um, but be that as it may, it's not a disease, guys. See, that, that's great. Um, that's great information there, uh, Dr. Scott. I, I was very disturbed when I went through your material um, sometime back and we discovered that well, you said they, 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 these pseudo-life forms pick the metals up and use them as weapons. I mean, that, that on, in its own is disturbing. Now, for, for our listeners and those that may not be familiar with uh, Morgellons, Dr. Scott, do you think that you could just go through some of the symptoms? Now, people understand that you don't need to be symptomatic to have these uh, pseudo life forms within you. If you breathe, you have them. So um, would you mind doing that for us? Not at all. Before I do that, Rose, can I just do one quick thing? Because I, 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 I gave a nod, but I never said where uh, the scientific confirmation came from. Clifford Carnicom provided that, uh, and it's on his website, where he took enough blood samples. Now, he's very conservative. He will not present something unless he can absolutely prove it. Um, and so he says only in the United States, because that's where all his blood sample came from. But he took enough blood sample from enough people 
to push it out statistically to every man, woman, and child. And then he proceeded to do animals, dogs, kitties, that thing. And sure enough, it's all there, too. And all of these materials showed up in everybody. His second finding, which I also thought was extremely important, was that there was no correlation between those people presenting what were, and I'll get to the description of Morgellons, or what's being called Morgellons. Um, if we're going to call it Morgellons, please let's call it a disease. Let's call it a syndrome. Um, anyway, he found that there was no correlation between the people that were presenting these eruptions in the skin and the fibers and the brain fog and all the things that are traditionally uh, associated with quote-unquote Morgellons. And there was no correlation at all between the amount of material in the person and the presentation. That's very important. What he found was a person could have a great deal of this material in them and be presenting no symptomology at all. Conversely, there would be somebody who would be presenting sores and brain fog and all these things, and they'd have not very much in their blood. So that part is somewhat mysterious to a degree. The bottom line is we have to stop separating us and them, those guys with Morgellon and then the rest of us that are good to go. Because if we, if we affect that attitude, we've fallen into a terrible trap. And that's really where they want us to fall. So we're not doing any mitigating medicine with ourselves because nothing's really showing up on us. But it's in there, guys. And my, it's not, I don't say that to create fear. We should never be in a state of fear. But what I do say that for is that there are some very good, and we'll get to them, natural mitigating medicines that people can start doing. Uh, immediately to help themselves achieve the best wellness that you can achieve given the givens. Now, as to what is Morgellons, well, that's kind of interesting. At this point, I'd say thousands of people with, with that condition or syndrome have called me, and there are some very uh, concrete everybody's got kind of thing. Then there's a wide variance in... <laughs> The, uh, the kinds of events that are happening to these people, what they're seeing, what's happening in their home, um, and on and on. But what, we, what is traditionally considered um, the Morgellons is you have these uh, eruptions that look volcanic in nature. And from that, if you have a microscope and you take this very painful, a uh, little bit like shards of glass coming out, and they're very itchy sometimes, they can stay unhealed for months and years even. And if you take the material that comes out of those and put it under a microscope, you can see a number of things. Uh, a very, very, um, it lights up like a Christmas tree, crystalline polymer material uh, that looks fiber optic in nature. You have these pseudo life forms or what were initially called fibers, but now we know there's a, there are a lot more than just fibers. Now, Mr. Carnicom put them under very high magnification, and what we see is that they're not organic in any stretch, of that's why the word pseudo. Uh, but they do have movement and low-level life into low level intelligence, and low-life is probably right. <laughs> Freudian slip. Um, but they have an internal <laughs> fil filament, and that <laughs> filament is fully loaded with pathogen, yet not identified. Uh, lots of guesses, lots of like this, maybe it's that. And that's because, in my opinion, it's all been created. Therefore, it wouldn't come out of the box. You couldn't go to a textbook and hope to find it. Um, it seems like everything in this syndrome uh, has come out of a lab somewhere. So you have these little fiber things or pseudo life forms that you can see coming out of these sores. Um, many people who um, are afflicted, and, and presenting, because everybody's afflicted, but it are presenting symptoms. They have brain fog. They have a very hard time uh, remembering things. They can space out. They can actually 